you know, there's there's this this new theory going around. Well, I guess it's, it's not, not new. New, it's very old. But it's a, it's new. It's the old new. It's new old. It's very it's very in in vogue right now. Are you talking about the the pancake theory? Oh, I'm talking about flat Earth, baby. Ooh. Yeah. Do we really want to go there, man? I don't know, man. We've we talked about it with Mark Sargent, and you know we talked about it with another guy. Well, we didn't talk about flat Earth, but since we've talked with him, he has been talking about flat Earth quite a bit. I'm confused now. So you're, you're wait what? <laughs> I'm There's saying, a guy we talked to about it, I'm, but then we didn't talk about it with him. But then he talk, talked about talking it. Talking is hard when you're flying through time and space. Yeah, gone. Okay, fine. I'll, I'll I'll let you you know let go of. See now you've messed me up. I don't know what Art. I'm saying. This whole teleportation word like stuck between space and time, and and we're just losing it, man. We're losing it. All right, teleportation, Nater Tater. Take us to Rob Skiba. <laughs> Later, Tater. <laughs> Later, Tater. <laughs> There he is. Hey, hey, Rob. What's up? What's up, man? Rob, why are you looking at us like that, buddy? Well, I I have to say, you guys screwed me up for the last seven months. (laughs) (laughs) How's that? It's all your fault. (laughs) We hear that a lot. What's the reason this time? Uh, uh, You know, a lot of times when I'm traveling on the road of course in texas everything's a, a long trip you know right. it's not like just down the road it's a half hour to 45 minutes minimum well i went to do my taxes in uh april 13th and a lot of times i'll, do, I'll download a pon- podcast or something to listen to on my drive and you guys are one of my go-to places for that so i you know i went there and i said i see this thing flat earth with mark Sargent, and i'm going well that looks is this like an april fool's joke or something you know <laughs> I figured you guys were just goofing or whatever, so I download it. Yeah, it'll be a good listen. I listen an hour and a half drive to go do my taxes, and I'm rolling my eyes when I first start listening to this. Right. But by the end of it, I'm scratching my head going, well, shoot, some of that made sense. <laughs> so I've like kind of screwed up doing my taxes. I finished my taxes, and I have an hour and a half, half drive back home, so I decided to listen to it again. And... I've been screwed up ever since. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, the, that whole flat earth or enclosed system or wh- however you want to put it, uh, Mark Sargent makes, likes to make sure that we call it other things um, in addition to flat earth. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's really making this, this weird resurgence. And, you know, a lot of the stuff is at, at least... I can safely say compelling. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So you've 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 kind of gotten on that train and then done some done your research on that or what's been going on? Kinda, dude. Mm-hmm. I've got probably thirty hours worth of YouTube videos produced on it now. Whoa! And, and easily two hundred, if not close to three hundred, pages of printed content uh, in blog format. You know. You yeah. Can print out. Yeah. It's uh, you know when I first went down that rabbit hole. My first thing is I'm going to debunk this, you know, right? This is because I have the same knee jerk reaction everybody has. This is crazy. This is stupid. This is insane. But I, you know, I have to tell you when you start looking at the NASA photographs and stuff like that, and you start seeing words like composite, and you start seeing the Photoshop clone tool being used very quite liberally, you right. know, in in their artwork. And then this is what really got me. Uh, I was watching some kind of, uh, I don't know, it was a Discovery Channel documentary or something, and they had, uh, you know, Earth's imagery and whatnot, and there's this one particular blue marble that is being used over and over and over again uh, as a video effect, like a, like a transition, a, a wipe, and it was the blue marble that if you bought a, an iPhone or an iPad, it was the background. Yeah. 2002. You know, I get the, oh, Yeah. <laughs> Well, that particular Earth, if you look at that, that, that one, that blue marble, there's a weird cloud formation just off to the, I guess, kind of like the northwest of the United States, kind of off the coast of Maine, maybe Nova Scotia. It's like a backward C with a long tail, and in front of the C is kind of a, a horizontal line. It's a very, you know, if, once you see it, you can't not it's see it. very unique. You, yeah, you can't unsee it. Well, I start seeing this over and over and over again as video transitions, and I'm going, wait a minute, if this is a real legitimate NASA thing, I mean, how nice of them to make a a 3D model for all the videographers in the world to use, (laughs) uh, you know, as a video transition. Right. And then I realized I used it. I used the exact, I did a conference, a virtual conference back in December, 
and, and my friend Rick Hummer helped me do an introduction for it, and we used that Earth. Really? So now I'm going, okay, this is clearly, I mean, it's a 3D model. It's not, it's not the real deal. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, so that's the first thing I did, but the second thing I did, which should have been the first thing, was consult the scriptures. And I have to tell you, if, if you take, if you put all your preconceived notions and biases aside, that we all have, because we've been taught globes since we saw it in kindergarten, uh, yeah, I'm t- I, at least for me, I cannot get a spinning heliocentric ball out of anything in the scriptures. Mm. And that's when I was pretty much hosed after that, because... <laughs> I've built my entire ministry of telling people, hey, the Bible's true, and you can take it as your source for truth, and take it literally. Well, especially if you're a King James only guy, you take it literally, welcome to the Flat Earth Club. (laughs) Yeah, you know, it's very interesting, and Gons has shared, and people have shared with me that, uh, you know, they noticed a a Flat Earth trend going on in in Rob Skiba land, and so I was very interested because... It's your fault. (laughs) <laughs> you know, I, I guess we can't deny that blame. I, you know, we get a lot of emails about, for just specifically about the Mark Sargent episode and yeah. the the flat Earth, and you know, some some of it is good, some of it, well, some of it is positive towards him, some of it is negative, but also some of it is negative just among other flat earthers. Yeah. Like there are some flat earth. I mean, that was one thing that I kind of enjoy about the flat earth uh, club is that, you know, even within its ranks, there's people still trying to figure it out and disagreeing and stuff. And I think that's even from, you know, it's, if we're going to talk about the scientific method, you need that if you're going to have a true uh, inquiry, uh, you know, inquiry into what's going on. Well, it's funny because you know, you know, you guys know this in Christian circles. You know, pre-trib rap, rapture, mid-trib, you know, post-trib, and they're all fighting and calling each other heretics, and you know, <laughs> yeah. those religious subjects in Christianity to go off on somebody about. Right. And as soon as I was sort of introduced to that world, you, you got the Eric Dubay and Mark Sargent and Matt Boylan. These were kind of the top three guys out there at first. Now there's a bunch of others out there, but you know, then they start throwing stuff at each other. You know, you're, you're yeah. I saw I saw all that happen. Yeah, you're a shill, you're this, you must be an Illuminati plant, and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh. <laughs> Somebody, I, I got a voicemail somebody sent me, because I've realized that if you really want to see somebody get in touch with their inner psycho, all you have to do <laughs> is mention that you're looking at this. Right. They will go completely insane right in front of you. It's <laughs> truly incredible. And I've, I've had no shortage of emails and Facebook messages and phone calls. Right. Somebody's like, you know, I'm, I must be a paid Illuminati shill or whatever. And I'm thinking, man, I didn't get my checks. I, I'm on, yeah, I'm, I know. <laughs> I'm still direct, waiting for mine, too. <laughs> I mean, if it's direct deposit, I mean, somebody messed up. <laughs> we're, on the same, I, we're on the same payroll as Beyonce and Jay-Z. We, we got to have our checks coming <laughs> sooner or later. I guess we're just too low on the totem pole <laughs> to <laughs> really see anything. But, you know, it, it is one of those issues. I, I've personally backed away from it just because I saw so much dissension. And I, and I felt bad for you, Rob, because I saw all this stuff happen to you. And uh, that was, I don't think that was fair uh, from all the angles, you know, the, the, the different people attacking you and all this stuff. But it does speak into this idea that it's really interesting for Christians. For me, I started to think, like, what if what if this whole thing is kind of fabricated in a way to pin Christians down into this idea of like, oh, if you don't believe the flat earth, then you're not a Christian or you're not a Bible believer. And that's what I started hearing, you know, just in my YouTube channel and all this stuff, you know, if I talk about stuff that's uh, reported about space, they'll be like, well, it's all fake. It's all fake. And you're a shill because you don't believe the Bible and all this stuff. Uh, How have you dealt with that? I mean, I I know you've dealt with a lot of that stuff, but what's been, what's been kind of your stance? Cause I know you haven't really landed hard on like the earth is flat. You're, you're more agnostic is what I heard you say last time. So yeah, I've actually, as far as I know, I coined this phrase, but I've now taken to calling myself a Zetetic agnostic. Because, okay, I mean, agnostic, most people hear agnostic and they think, oh, you don't really know if you believe in God or whatever. Obviously, right. anybody's followed me, they know I believe in God. But as it pertains to this subject, uh, Zetetic is like proceeding with, uh, from a position of inquiry and investigation, observation. And, right. you know, agnostic, I, I'm, I, I can't even really say I'm a globalist anymore. And that word has taken on a whole new meaning for me, too. Right. 
but I mean, there are things about the globe that just don't work. Don't it? Don't it? Does not make sense when you look at the Chicago skyline for one thing, from sixty miles away. And Mirage, I'm sorry, I'm not going to buy it. I don't buy it. <laughs> I've talked to people who live there, uh, near the area where that picture was taken, and they're like, "No, oh, we've all, we've all seen it at, at all times of the year." And you right. know. For Mirage, that weatherman was saying, well, you know, the temperature is just right with the cold water and the warm air. Well, what do you do in the wintertime when it's both cold? You know, and they can right. see it even more clearly. So there's a lot of things that aren't really working for me on the globe. But there's also, to be fair, quite a number of things that don't work for me on the flat Earth model either. So I don't know where I am with it. You know, Zetetic <laughs> agnostics about the only thing that works for me. But uh, Zach Bauer, I don't know if you guys know who he is. He's got a ministry called New Tutora. Right. And he posted a video, uh, two videos recently, uh, from taking a biblical stance against the flat earth and saying, you know, the, the Bible doesn't talk about flat earth. And I'm like, dude, I don't know how you can get that from the scriptures, that, that it's a spinning heliocentric ball. It's not there. Um, and I've got a page, one of the longer blogs that I wrote. Um, in fact, I had to create a whole website called testingtheglobe.com uh, because there's so much content that I kept putting up there. And one's called The Bible and the Still Flat Earth. And I, and I put it just scriptures in one section. All the scriptures that I could find is probably not exhaustive, but as many as I could find. And I'm like, look, I'm not even going to tell you anything. You just read it for yourself and tell me if you get a spinning heliocentric ball out of it. And you, it's not there. So, and what really messed me up, and especially from some of these Torah people out there, is, you know, it's all, you know, the, if it's not in the Torah, I'm like, look, Genesis is in the Torah. It's, it's not an Illuminati psyop. If it is a psyop, it started with God. <laughs> because <laughs> in Genesis chapter 1, and this is what really tripped me up, is when it describes the firmament on day 4, uh, and, uh, not the firmament, but the uh, sun, moon, and stars on day 4, it says that it, it was pla they were placed in the firmament. Not outside and around. And I used to teach the canopy theory that Kent Hovind, Carl Baugh, and a lot of others talk about, a canopy of ice surrounding the earth. As recently as this past December, I taught it. Uh, but then if you go back and read Genesis 1, on day 4, it says he put the sun, moon, and stars in. And the Hebrew word for firmament is rakia. But there's a bait, the letter bait, in front of it. Uh, and whenever you use the letter bait in front of a word as a prefix, it means in. So... Um, and if you look up Rakia, it's it's a beaten down metallic structure that's mirror like, and you know God's thrones on top of it, et cetera. That's where you get the idea of the dome. Right, right. So it's that stuff's in the dome, and so you know to answer your question, you know when people post all this stuff about space, I'm highly skeptical of anything that comes from NASA or any other space agency uh, that's funded by a government. Right, and I think that's the main. That might be the main uh, sort of through line with all the flat Earth stuff is, um, you know, you basically, the, the, the argument starts with how much do you trust the yes. government? How much do you trust NASA? And then it all can spiral out from there. Well, that's really interesting, Rob. And it's, it's actually great to talk to you about this because, um, like we said, we haven't talked to you in a while and you've, you've been up to some stuff and now we find out that it's, uh, at least partially our fault. <laughs> I'm it's square up on your shoulder. <laughs> well, I didn't want to take all the credit, but if you're, if you're giving it. Um, all right. Thanks, Rob. We got to talk. We'll catch up later, buddy. Later, Rob. Think outside the cage. So, Rob did mention our, our Flat Earth episode that we actually did. So, I mean, there's really only one logical place to go now. Mark Sargent. Mark Sargent. Let's go. Oh. Hey, Mark. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing well. How about you? So good. So good. We found you. We You haven't been gone for too long. I mean, you were on episode 89. So. Yeah. And what, what episode is this? This is the... 100. 100. Ah, nice yeah. going. So you were only 11 episodes ago. Which was like two and a half years ago. So <laughs> It seems like a while ago, actually. It, but it really does. Yeah. yeah, maybe maybe the flat Earth, uh, the years are skewed as well. They are different, yeah, I think. That's uh, serious uh, science. <laughs> it's serious science. So how you been doing? You've been hanging in there for eleven episodes. You're still alive. That's good to know. 
Yeah, yeah, I've been doing uh, a whole bunch more interviews. I uh, did another clue. Um, you know, the, the movement's just continuing in all sorts of, of, of different ways and forms. And, and uh, in fact, I think I'm up to, I think I've done 37 interviews so far. Wow. wow. Yeah, which is great. Yeah. A couple more next week. and Yeah, you're like catching up to us, and we've been doing this for years. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's people. There's people are actually moving way faster than me. Uh, there's one, one of the flat earthers. Uh, her name's Patricia. She's she started been interviewing flat earthers, and she's already in nine weeks. She's done thirty shows. Oh my wow. gosh! I know she's just cranking on it, and it's all video. It's video, you know, and you know, wow. for Mike. She used to do radio back in the day. Got uh, it. It's like holy smoke! Seriously, she's so fast. So what's what's going on with you? Is there any new information? I remember you were putting out these clues, and I mean the flat Earth thing has just been growing so rapidly. Oh, yeah. Um, what's what's your deal, man? Um, at this point, I'm just real. You know, I released Flat Earth Clues Twelve. Realize. And that talked about the power of illusion and how we are easily fooled. And then the rest of it, I've just been tied up with, um, uh, you know, um, on Truth Frequency Radio, I've been doing Strange World. Uh, in fact, just before I came on with you guys, I just finished up episode 29. And Jonathan, my co-host, he's, he's already got a show now called Perceptions. He's up to like episode 10. And it's just been, I, I, I'm having a hard time keeping track of everybody that's doing stuff now. It's gotten, it's, it's fantastic. We're, there's even talk of doing a convention. Wow. wow. Like a that, flat earth con. That <laughs> is like a new level. <laughs> I know. I was going to do it. We're told we can set this thing up in Vegas. It'll be, and there's people saying, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll do this. I'll do this. Are you kidding me? We're at that point. Yeah. Uh, So it's really, really exciting. I can't even begin to tell you. Uh, Rob Skiba uh, just released his new book, uh, something to the effect of, and I'm not going to be able to quote it verbatim, but I think it's Flat Earth and how it cracks the book of Enoch. Right, right, right. Um, Well, here's something that is kind of interesting to me within the flat Earth thing is it didn't I didn't know much about it before your episode, Uh, but I I didn't know even more. Kind of the dis ah, discrepancies is the wrong word, but even within the flat Earth community, are are there not some? maybe disagreements or different oh, yeah. views on certain yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, and there and there's going to be because it's it's really this is kind of like the gold rush stage where everyone's kind of looking they're everyone's jockeying around and seeing what the most popular model's going to be. Right. Uh, the only thing anyone can agree on is that uh you know science and NASA specifically you know has not been telling us the truth about where we actually live and and what the world actually looks like. We don't even have really in my opinion a truly accurate to scale map mm. and so everybody's just kind of like okay wait you know they're just everyone's really really hungry and a feverish pitch they're looking for information and everything so yeah there is disagreements uh absolutely the um uh, you know is the moon two-dimensional is it three-dimensional what exactly is powering the sun if we're having to, and, and it was something i predicted anyway which is we have you have to revisit just about every theory and fringe theory and place it into this context. And it's been, yeah, it's been wild. Yeah, there's been some dissension out there. Some of the grumbling has kind of calmed down. I mean, yeah, I know there's been some recent videos, and uh, but the, the wave of positive videos that have been put out recently has been, and there's even been more women involved, which is fantastic. Real, real positive stuff coming from the, the female side of this. Great. Uh, and uh, Ladies so, yeah. represent. Yeah, yeah. So like a like a orphan red, this wonderful girl from Canada who is putting out doing a, the you know the smiley happy stuff where actually right. you know says sparkle sounds and, and stuff. <laughs> and a, a girl named Lula who's going around the street and just sitting down next to people and bringing it up in conversation. And wow. she's totally genuine and it's great to see all these new players every day you know i just hit i go into youtube i type in flat earth and i know people that are listening to this first time they're going holy smokes what is this guy <laughs> but you type in flat earth you set the filter this year and you get just thousands and uh, thousands of videos of, yeah. from from all sorts of and backgrounds and it's and it's great oh i'm sorry then the other thing that's happened really since i talked to you guys last is a, a lot of professionals have been coming forward to me uh, if you, if you missed it, um, you know, uh, United States Navy missile instructor came out, said there's no Coriolis effect and the, you know, there's no curvature, a submarine electronics chief, a, um, a flight instructor, 
a career surveyor, an industrial engineer, a structural engineer. And I just did uh, one tonight where I read a statement from the uh, um, United States Army field artillery operator. Uh, wow. He says the same thing. He's going, look, he goes, there, you know, we're shooting a pencil beam radar out at uh, 30 miles or so. He's going, there's no curve there. He's going, I don't know why we ever thought there was. Wow, um, that's I, crazy. I know. And, I, I feel, and some of them aren't even anonymous. Like the Navy guy, he's in 10 years old. He's pretty smart. I think he, he's covered either way because if somebody comes and says, you know, we're going to hit you for a Section 8 and, and knock you out, he's going to say, really? What for? Flat Earth? I'm going to go straight to the news with this one. And you try to knock me out of the Army for believing in Flat Earth. Right. So, right. Uh, but he was, well, the, he was the first one. Yeah. Well, that's fascinating. You know, the, the interesting thing with the whole theory and just the whole genre in general yeah. and that 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 i think is good for it is that there is so much diversity yet there's so many people agreeing on the same basic principle it kind of reminds me of christianity in general it's like we all know jesus is here but uh we can argue about the other stuff and to your point it has really brought people to uh, the the po one of the big positive things it's brought to to the movement is the 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 move towards spirituality because right. if it's real especially with my model because i use the you know, the truman show and closed world model uh did i tell you i had a website at the time in closedworld.com i don't know but you yeah, can tell us right now oh, okay good uh, but in that model you know you're you're saying well if it isn't closed then the edge of it is there's your proof of intelligent design if that that's it, then there's a creator. And if there's a creator, boy, you better start living right. You right. better start because you're going to be accountable. You know, even if, you know, the, uh, the, a, a big hand doesn't come down and, and start slapping you around, you should still start thinking, start thinking twice about what you're doing every day. Very right? interesting. Making the right decisions. Very cool. I've seen a lot of, you know, I, I, I kind of tinker around and, and check out what's going on with it. And I, I've sort of stepped back from the movement, so to speak. I'm, I'm just kind of watching it. In, in oh, curiosity, you know, uh, but I've noticed that there's a range, right? There's your, you know, like you said, some, some pretty high level folks coming out and saying stuff, Yeah. but then there's your amateur sort of, you know, somebody with the video camera, you know, just shooting the sun setting and making some sort of point that yeah. may or may not be, you know, accurate yeah. or helpful to the, to the discussion. Uh, has there been any, with the influx of, you know the the interest in the in the popularity of the topic. Has there been anything where you're kind of like, I wish there was more rigorous or you know uh, I guess more scientific or I don't know what the, the word the is, scientific but. method. Yeah, I mean you got to take the good with the bad. Unfortunately, I mean the cream will always rise to the top anyway. But we find some really you know we find some hidden gems in some of those people that go out there and do stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of you know people. You know, yeah, exactly what you're saying. They just hit the camera and just record for 10 minutes. And I don't even know if they're speaking coherently half the time. But there's a lot of people that put a lot of production value into it. And the scientific method is coming up uh, a lot. And, uh, you know, covering the curvature or the Coriolis effect or, you know, what's going on with the sun or the moon, the moonlight thing. Oh, that just fascinated me when that thing came down the pipe where that the moonlight was actually um, is, is acting like a cool laser that's cooling objects and then that it's actually warmer in moonshade. And, and if you take a, the moonlight and put a magnifying glass on it and touch, you know, hit it on something, it's actually colder. It's actually Whoa. magnifying the cold. That is freaky because then the whole thing opens up. It's like, okay, if the moon isn't reflecting the sun's light, then what is it? Is it, is it literally what, you know, what was described in the Bible? Whereas, you know, the, the sun lights the day and the moon lights the night and their own, their own two light sources. I'm gonna, not, to, I'm gonna have to test that one out. Oh, check that out. People are using the the reason why it's so popular is because a lot of people, you know, they're not using the the thermometers under the tongue. They're using the uh, those digital ones. You, you right, point people's right. ears or whatever it is, but you can point those at any object. So they're pointing them at like you know they put like little copper plates and they put one in the moonlight and one in the moon shade. And for people who don't know what I'm talking about here, it's the exact opposite of, of sunlight and sunshade. If it's in the sun, if it's 100 degrees in the sun, it's probably 90 degrees in the shade. But in the moon. It's, it's the moon, let's say it's 50, degree, 50 degrees in the moonlight. Well, in the moonshade, it should be cooler, but it's actually like 55 degrees in the moonshade. And it doesn't make any sense. And it's like, really, how is this? But the, luckily for us, uh, thank goodness, uh, we can we can do this with our own technology. And we, we, we have the ability to make cool lasers that can generate a cold light. Uh, but it's amazing. I mean, watching that, and that just came up within the last, I don't know, two months. 
It's been, Holy it's smokes. Been, yeah, yeah, I was going to say. Funny. I had not heard of any of that. That's blowing my mind right every, now. Every day. I mean, I literally have to go and I say, fl- I type in flat earth. I set the filter today and I just step back and I go, okay, who's going who's gonna to throw something out that I have no idea what this is? Wow. And, well, that uh, definitely gets the listeners uh, something, to, something to do when they're yeah. bored. In there, yeah, <laughs> and uh, also just uh, some new information. I had not heard that, yeah. you know. And and uh, through the Facebooks and certain emails that we get and stuff like that, we got people uh, somewhat keeping us up to date on the flat Earth thing. Oh, that's um, good. So, so we're we're following the story closely. Everybody, you know, that you're you guys. I'm really happy you guys decided to cover it because late, you know, just about every major. Uh, alternative media thing group tried to has covered it at one point or another, with the exception of really two. Uh, one being uh, Joe Rogan, who even though he didn't cover it, he's mentioned it in three different shows, saying, "I'm not I've actually." Heard, yeah, I've actually heard him say that he's not going to cover it. He's, he's not going to cover it. it. Say, oh, stupid, I, I'm, uh, waiting, I'm waiting for him to eat those words where he brings somebody <laughs> on and then says, "Look, I'm just so you know, I'm only bringing you in here so that I don't have to talk about this ever again." <laughs> um, and then Alex Jones who uh, I know through the grapevine has his producers have talked to some people that, that I've talked to who they're, they're trying to find a way to introduce the show with, without making it sound completely crazy. Right. right. And it's, it's a tough call. I said, well, first you don't say flat earth. That's, that's the very first thing you do. Yeah. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see if he does. What were you? You were calling it what? Enclosed system, in, enclosed system, enclosed world Truman see, show. I remember yeah. <laughs> oh, by the way, you you sound you sound much uh, clearer with your with your microphone. Your normal. Yeah, right. I got my my regular mic here. I nice. was I was really slumming it last time. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you sounded like an ogre. <laughs> well, you know the whole thing's been really interesting, and uh, it, it's taken. I think 2015 by far, it's been the most popular topic in the world of conspiracy. And uh, I would I would say um, keep on you know looking at it you know I again I've stepped away from it but at the same time I'm 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 curious you know I'm always curious about what's what's being talked about and and my whole thing is like looking at the science angle of it is really fascinating to me because to me it's almost like the uh, the whole the whole integrity of science comes into question for me as well because I I started to question like okay can the scientific method be scientifically tested you know and you can't yeah. do that and there's like this circular thing there so it's it, you know it just goes back to the what do we really know question yeah. and and yeah. you know i think that's important for us to you know wash everything through yeah um uh, real quick because I, I know we don't have a lot of time but emory university down in uh, atlanta i believe they uh, you know fairly fairly big uh, thing they did a mandatory town hall meeting for uh freshmen Incoming freshmen, where they were talking to them about, and they called they called the town hall meeting flat Earth hoax, and which I thought was very interesting. But they were really talking about what you just said. How do you know what you know? What is the evidence? You know, don't don't just go on what other people you know have told you. How do you know? Right. And I said absolutely. Now, of course, they didn't really go into flat Earth that much, and they recorded it, and I watched the whole thing. It wasn't that great, but the the whole premise <laughs> the whole premise wasn't that good. Was was good in that. Which is what I try to, the, the hook that I try to tell people. It's like, how do you know what you know? How do you know the world is what you think it is? Is it, you know, why is it a globe? Is it because, is it because you saw a globe in the corner of your classroom or because somebody told you? And if that somebody is NASA, you're putting a lot of faith in a group which, you know, has exclusive rights to a lot of stuff. Right, right. So, all right. Thanks, Mark. See you later. Later, Mark.